All right, so in this video, I am going over positive pressure ventilation. Um, not just positive pressure ventilation, but how it can cause uh, cause gastric distension. And just first off, what is positive pressure ventilation? That is when you are breathing for a patient. So this patient right now is no longer breathing. So you have to manually pump air into their system. Their, air, their respiratory system, all right? So that's positive pressure ventilation. You are breathing for this patient, all right? And then, so what is gastric distension? The gastric distension is when the stomach grows bigger and bigger, all right? And this can happen if too much air gets into the, the GI tract, all right? Cool. So that's what I'm covering. So positive pressure, uh, positive pressure ventilation is breathing for a patient with a BVM. That's one way uh, that positive pressure ventilation occurs. So when you breathe for a patient, sometimes the air that is meant to go into the lungs actually goes into the GI tract and down into the stomach. Why is this a big issue? It's a big issue because if the stomach continues to grow with pressure so the pressure continues to build up in here right there's other there's other stuff in here there's gonna be fluids and and chewed, around, chewed up food and once the pressure gets high enough all of this will come out because the pressure is gonna push that food out and they're gonna vomit and that's why gastric distension is, is kind of a big deal um, well one you have a big mess all the vomit and two, some of that vomit can go back into the, the trachea, the windpipe, and uh, cause bigger issues. All right, so gastric distension. Why, is it, uh, why does it occur? How does it occur? So because of decreased pulmonary compliance. So because your body, this patient's body, is no longer functioning, now you have to force air into the lungs. And the lungs aren't going to accept all that air as if the patient was breathing because you're forcing air into the system. Um, so because of that, now you have resistance and you have a lot of ba uh, a lot of that. The resistance is going to cause that air to go into the, the GI tract. So that's one reason why gastric distension occurs because you don't have compliance with lungs. The lungs aren't going to help you out. Okay, another one is decreased lower esophageal sphincter tone. So what is this? So lower esophageal, esophageal sphincter, that is this, uh, like a little gate door, little door right here at the bottom of the GI tract. Um, not the bottom of the GI tract, but pretty much at the, at the very bottom of the esophagus, you have a little sphincter and the sphincter Think of it, it looks kind of like a, like a anus, like a butthole. There's like a little thing that opens up and that's the hole and it'll open up to allow food to come into the stomach. Usually it's closed off, that way nothing can go in. All right, unless you know you, food, unless food is traveling down the stomach. Air, air by itself does not make this sphincter open up. But because your patient right, right now, they're unconscious. If your patient is not breathing and you have to breathe for them, they're gonna be unconscious most likely, okay? So if your patient is unconscious, that means they have very poor or no muscle tone. So all the muscles are relaxed in the entire body. The sphincter is no exception. This is going to relax. So if this is relaxed and you have resistance in your lungs, while well, uh, some of that air is going to backtrack and go in the pathway of least resistance, being that esophagus and that open sphincter causing gastric distension, which can lead to pressure buildup and vomit. Okay, so let's see what else I wrote here. Uh, why people, let's see, why people that are passed out lose muscle tone, uh, so I talked about that. And that's what that's pretty much it. So essentially, essentially, gas delivered will follow the path of least resistance, which may be the stomach. Again, if you're forcing, if you're pushing air into the patient, the patient's system, um, they're not breathing, so their lungs are not going to be compliant. Right? They're not as compliant. You're forcing air in there. 
because of that, you're going to have some of that air that's going to come out and go into the esophagus, the GI tract. At the same time, the sphincter, the little, the little gate at the bottom of the esophagus that allows food that closes up and opens to allow food into the stomach, it has no tone. So it's just kind of just hanging out there. So air can just pass through. It's not closed right now because your patient's unconscious, no muscle tone, right? And that's pretty much it. Um, and why is it a big deal? Because the patient can vomit and they can asphyxiate, which meaning that means that they can get some food lodged into their airway and it'll cause bigger issues and it's a big mess. All right, any questions, leave comments below and I'll try to make a few more of these.